Hi right, guys, welcome back to uh, Black Anchor Outdoors. It's been a little while between videos, but we're, we're, uh, we're up the Waddigans this weekend to do some uh, do some filming. Yeah, we're coming up a bit of winter hammocking. Uh, we love our hammock camping, so we've got a few different modifications we've tried out for winter. We want to should be getting nice and cold. It's probably going to be about four degrees tonight. Yeah. So um, we want to test a few different things out and uh, with our hammocks and our um, underquilts. But we're also going to need some fire to keep us warm tonight. And that's where this one's coming in. SCHF 43. Everyone knows it. It's the Jess X. Jessica X, uh, Chris Tanner design. Chris Tanner's, yep, from Prepared Mine 101. So um, even though we've got our other knives on us, we're going to solely stick to this today in our fire prep farm and everything we're doing around camp tonight. We're just gonna, um, yeah, do it all. So we got this probably, what did we get, about six months ago? Just after they came out. Just was, after yeah. they came out, we got this, and we were gonna do a video straight away. And uh, we ended up just holding off, and I've been using it. I've been, uh, I take people out camping quite a bit, and I've been giving it to anyone that comes camping. For one, to see if they like it, because of the unusual shape and that kind of thing. I've had not one complaint yet, and the other to see if they can break it. Neither's happened yet. All right, mm -hmm. so stick with us and we'll, um, we'll get into some stuff with the Jess X. Dave's had this um, Jess X, SCH, SCHF 43 for, for quite a while now, since as we said, just after he, um, they came out, they were released in Australia. I've used it a little bit, but not a lot. So Dave's letting me do a lot of the um, initial cutting and chopping today. I think he just wants to get out of a bit of work, but that's okay. It's nice and cold up here, so it's all right to get warm. What I'm gonna do, we've just found this um, branch, the branch that's fallen down here. So I'm just hacking into a little bit of this. Uh, it's pretty dead. Pretty um, hard too. It is, it is hard. I'll give, I'll give it some chops in here and we'll see how we go. Obviously, I'm going to stop before we get through it to the, um, the rocks and I might move it a bit and then we'll go from there. But it's a pretty good position for where it is now. So, all my knives, whatever I carry, I usually have a lanyard. But this big hook, the way it's designed here, um, should prevent slippage. The grip on it is awesome. I love this stuff with the shade, the TPE on this. It's, it's really grippy, even without gloves. It, it really doesn't feel like you could even um, let this go. What I might actually do is have a first few swings without the gloves just to see what the grip is like because it's, it is grippy. It's, I love rubber grips on, them, um, on, on knives, so especially a big chopper like this. You definitely don't want that big hunk of metal flying out. So I'll give it a few goes here without the gloves just to see what the hand shock vibration, uh, hot spots. I've seen all the videos where they talk about if you pull right down into here, you might get a hot spot, so I'm not going to do that. I'll just hold it naturally where it feels comfortable, and it does feel comfortable there, and uh, go from there. See how we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a hard wood, but it definitely does get through it. Now you can feel, even though the grip's there, I can feel when I'm hitting it because it's so hard. It's sort of bouncing a little bit forward, but it's, it's great safety having that there because at no time at all doing that does it feel like it's going to um, shoot out of the hand. So that is good. I'll keep going in there. Yeah, that is hard. I don't know if the birds are too happy with the noise. I think they're about to have a bit of a snooze here. And um, we start hacking down in this tree here. So. You can see how hard that timber is and hear how hard that timber is there. But yeah, definitely. It is a beastie chopper, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Let's have a look at that. As you can see, Dave used it a fair bit, but um, that edge is, that's great. Mm. 
might get Dave to give me a hand and we'll turn it over. Alright, so Dave's giving me a hand now, flip it over. Makes it a bit easier actually up this high, but don't know how steady it's going to be, but we'll, we'll go in from a standing position. Uh, you always get a bit more power being up like this from an elevated position swinging down on it. So we'll see how it goes again. I've put the glove on. What I was finding, this is so hard, it doesn't want to slip out of your hand without gloves, no doubt about it. It's definitely not going to slip out. That hook is perfect. What I'm finding, because this is so hard, is as I'm hitting down, it's like my hand keeps going down like that. And what I'm finding, could be me as well, the way I'm holding it, I did break that finger years ago so it doesn't really curl up like a normal finger. As I'm hitting, when it's hitting something really hard, I feel like I'm... That is hitting me in the hand every time, just because it's so solid. You can hear that, listen to that. It, it's, it's hard timber. So every time I'm hitting that, it's feeling just like I'm just bouncing onto that. But as I said, that could be that broken bone that never got healed properly. Um, it, 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 even I'm astounded how hard this timber is that it's still getting through. Obviously, a nice big um, bow saw or something would be good, but we're, we're doing everything today with the, um, the Jess X, so we're gonna keep going and get through it. But it's definitely throwing out some chunks, isn't it? Definitely a lot easier when you can get that full power into it and get that stroke down and, and, and the angle of the knife, the weight forward, what it's designed to do. Um, funny that, what, what it's designed to do, it is doing when you do it properly. So, but yeah, I don't feel like I'm having to hit it anywhere near as hard this way just because I'm getting that power from standing above it, striking down. Where down on the ground before it was definitely had that one Dave yeah. <laughs> when I was down on the ground before it felt like I was using a lot more energy to get the same result so um, I'd like to conserve the energy when we're out here and as we've said before in other videos um, the Australian hardwoods are really hard yeah. they're a lot harder than a, a lot of places in the world so. are Australians harder than most people in the world too? <laughs> So, yeah, you know, just, I'm just taking it easy there just because I know it hasn't got much to go through there anymore and I don't want it to go down and, and um, bite into the knife or worse, still flip through and come there. So we might roll it over again. We'll turn the camera off, roll it over. Well, I'm happy to say it went through it, no worries. I think I'm a bit worse for wear, not the knife. But um, that is... As you can hear, that is some hard wood there. But um, yeah, I'm very impressed with it. This is the longest I've used it for. And um, looking at that, it's just perfect. Um, Dave and I both work with the work sharp and we, we like to sharpen those. So this has been retouched since they bought it original. But um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, she's still shaving hairs there, so. That's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. The, the edge retention, that's awesome. And as you can see, like Dave's been using this fairly solid every time he gets out at least once um, and lending other people, but at least one task every time he goes out, he does use it just to test different things with it. And as you can see, even the coating's holding up pretty well. Um, all those coatings will come off, we all know that. But yeah, he's um, it's been giving it a bit of a pounding and it is working, so it, it's still holding up. I'm very interested in seeing uh, the smaller tasks with it, things like that. I love finger choils and getting into it. So yeah, we'll move on and we'll try some of that stuff. Maybe some um, batoning in that. We all we know what batons takes the tactical. Everyone's seen that one. Where it chops down the whole tree. But um, yeah, we know we know what it work. But um, we'll still do it. We'll still, we'll still prep for the fire. So all right, we'll see you shortly. So, uh, yeah, Kane's chopped through this big part here. I'll let him do the hard bit. <laughs> and I'm gonna just chop some uh, smaller pieces, which we will be using tonight for firewood. Uh, same thing, I'm no gloves at the moment, just because I'm doing a small task.
can use it like a hammer. So yeah, you know, um, just get through all this stuff. Although it's not massive, it just you have a look at that. You know, it's nearly it's nearly gone through most of it, just one chop. Which is great. And I find the um this hook absolutely awesome. Uh, I love the ergonomics of this handle. I'm not really one I don't really care what a knife looks like. If it works, it works. Myself, I think it looks cool anyway, but uh, you know, getting into this bigger stuff like Kane was, I think any knife you ch chop through that, you're gonna hurt in different spots. And just, you know, where it was kind of hurting there with Kane, it's gonna hurt somewhere. You know, it's going through, what's that, six, eight inches of At hardwood. Least, yeah. Any knife's gonna bounce, any knife's gonna, have its, you know, the ergonomics change as you hit. All right, so uh, gonna pass you back to Kane. He's gonna do some smaller tasks. So we've kind of done the two now, both in this position. Bigger logs, you know, your tiny, smaller stuff ready for kindling. So we'll go on to uh, feather sticking. You ready? What I like, I was, I was listening to Dave talk before when he was doing that chopping of that medium sized stuff, the, the little ones there we're gonna use in the fire as well. That chopping through this, listen to that. It's like hitting an anvil, but it's really cool that this can do this. This that wasn't a knife task. You're not going to chop through six to eight inches of, of hard wood with a knife generally, but with this one you do. That's the coolest thing about this. It is that option you've got if you have no other option. If I lose my knife on my hip or something but you've still got this you can do that big job right there without a bow saw or a hand saw fold fold saw things like that um you can do the big jobs and that that's really impressive the little jobs a lot of things can do a little job uh can do little jobs and everyone's got piggyback knives or even a leatherman or something that can do those small fine tasks but to have the big jobs you can't do that with the leatherman you're not going to do that with a little bushcraft or a more or something like that so it is good to have it for that are there job, uh, implements better to do it? Obviously there are chainsaws or things like that or, or, or bow saws or um, little fold away barcos, things like that. They're, they're great for doing that stuff, but to have a knife that can do that, that's that's awesome, you know what I mean? It is, it is really good. We'll see how we go on here. Just making a few little feathers. Trying to choke up on it a bit. Let's get rid of some of this bark to start with. But yeah, it's just all with a knife like this. It's it's as as everyone does know when you're using different knives, especially the first time, you find your little groove with it. You find where it's doing what you want it to do, and you just find that sweet spot. On every knife's got those little sweet spots. So this is the first time doing this on camera with you guys. So working with me here, trying to find that sweet spot but yeah just pushing that blade down along there you can see how tight the little curl is look at that just pushing it down through there for such a big knife yeah, I'm very impressed with that the um, choked up spot is working really good you know I was saying to Dave I felt this knife in my hand before but I haven't used it before and I've watched all the vids of it um, and I'm trying to win them at the moment on the giveaway as well because I would like one check it out the back there, I said when I looked at that, I said that's going to be really uncomfortable when you do hold it in that position choked up. It looks to me like it will be uncomfortable with that, but it's it's not as pronounced in hand as I thought it was looking at other videos and that. And it's actually, I'm a lot more impressed with it than I thought I would be holding it there. I thought, oh, if I get one, I'm going to grind that flat, things like that. But actually, when it is there, it does fill out the palm really well. And um, yeah, plenty of, plenty of control with it. Um, I'm mighty impressed with that because that was one of the things I thought looking at the knife, I didn't mind I know what that's for, I like that uh, everything else on it I liked, it was just this bit here I looked at it and I went, wow but um, when you've got it in the hand it is definitely um, no problems at all It's actually it feels quite comfortable there filling out that hand but you can see, can it curl? yes it can curl um, I might try back a little bit further 
um, conventional knife hold here. It does feel a bit unwieldy there for, for this task, obviously for um, meat prep or anything like that, it's, it's not too bad, but can you still do it back here? Yeah, again, just find a different spot that it is feeling controlled on. And yeah, you can do them up here as well, right back here. So yeah, if you, if you have a bit smaller hand or something, and that might be a bit, I've got fairly large hands, so maybe people with smaller hands might find that a bit big, but with a big hand in there and you and you're gripping it in there, it's it's not too bad. It's not a hot spot or anything up in there, but um, it definitely to me feels a lot better doing it there and just pushing it down the blade along there. Feels a lot better. So, does it strike a ferro rod? Pretty sure it does, but we'll give it a go. Should have one here. Put it on the anvil there while we do this. Even on the back here, where are we going? This is the little Schrade ferro rod that comes with the SEH 37s, things like that. Definitely works. Is throwing sparks. It hasn't um, hasn't been grounded off here or anything. Sometimes a lot of our knives we just get them on the on the grinder at the back there just to make that real real defined. Um, but yeah, even with the coating here, it is it is throwing them. No worries. So yeah, that's pretty handy. Good to know. Yeah, that brownie colour is like a bronzy copper, isn't it? It's awesome. See the green in it every now and then? Flash through? Oil. Hmm? Oil. Yeah. Right, ready? Yep. Yeah. That's fun for the night. Right guys, we're back here this morning. We uh, we stayed last night in our hammocks just here. We ran out of light last night, so uh, filming had to kind of stop. But we're back at it this morning. Um, <clears throat> we've got, still got fire going here. Um, we did prep all the wood with the uh, Jessica X. So that, that was good. Um, <clears throat> so now we're gonna just do a little bit of batoning. Um, as you know, just talking to Kane, you know, watching like tacticals videos, um, all, all the people linked to Chris Tanner and they're batoning, you know, full trees and you know, ridiculous stuff. We don't, we don't need to, uh, to prove anything like that. You know, we, we pay for our knives <laughs> as well, but, um, we're just going to show how it actually works. You know, it is designed for that kind yeah. of thing. So. And there's so many videos. If you look them up, there's so many videos of it. We don't need to keep showing you how many times you can baton this thing. It, it, it batons really well. So, But we'll just, here. just do a small one. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll move the cameras in and baton through this. So you got through it pretty easy. Uh, I'll let Kane put on the rest.
Right, so another little trick we, uh, we use with, when we do take just a big knife um, is, I guess it's feather sticking, but, um, you know, it can, people do find it a little hard feather sticking with a, a knife of this size. So another little technique is, you know, hit it into a log and uh, we'll kind of st start pulling. It actually bites too well. We usually put something underneath to catch any feathers because it is hard to keep them on like you normally would. This is also good for, um, you know, if you were making tent pegs or whatever to actually get that angle. So I've actually brought this angle back around and I can get some really, really fine feathers. I don't know if you can see them. <clears throat> All right, so we'll probably, uh, Head over to uh, Final Thoughts and some specs. Alright guys, so uh, Final Thoughts on the uh, Jess X SCHF 43. Um, now he's, he's had a lot of backlash on this knife and I can't see why. Um, <clears throat> you know, as, as we said earlier in the video, I've had it for about six months, whatever it is, four months. I love it. I think it's, it does exactly what it's designed to do. So for batoning, it's great. You know, um, chopping, it's great. I think for me, the, the hook's perfect. And as I said in that first video, our first part of the video, chopping into this hard stuff, doesn't matter what you're, what knife you're using, this stuff is just like iron. It's gonna hurt, whatever it is. But just getting into normal kind of trees chopping, I don't find it hurts at all. Um, you know, choking up on, on this, I don't think is perfect, but same as, as it was designed, it's designed as a chopper that can do that if needed. So it's designed to take another knife with it so you do your chopping with that. If you were to lose that knife, you can do it with this. So you can get yourself out of, out of trouble, but you know, it's, it's not designed for that. What it is designed for, it absolutely nails. So I'm giving it a total thumbs up. I think he nailed it with the design and um, the 1070 is great too. Been watching everything on people trying to break them and what it took to to actually break it from tactical. I'll have, was I'll have a go at that. Awesome. It was ridiculous, but it was cool. All right, so I'll pass you over to Kane. Have his final All right, guys, my final thoughts on this is, is Dave's used it a lot more than me. This is my first real good test of it. I love it. I, I love it more than I thought I was going to, actually. Uh, I, was, I must admit, when I first saw it, I'm like, hmm, that's a bit weird looking. But after watching all the videos, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it to actually get it out for field use. This is the first time we've actually had a time uh, to both get out and just concentrate on, on this knife. Um, and yeah, I, I really, really do like it. The sheath, we didn't mention too much about the sheath. It's a nice ballistic nylon sort of sheath. It's got different carry options. The straps over there, we can, you can hang it across your shoulder here, Baldrick style. You can put it on your belt, big, massive, generous belt loop, and you can leg strap it. Yeah, it, it is a beast, isn't it? It's, um, it is unbreakable. We're not shooting them with rifles or anything like that to, to um, break. It is unbreakable. For your daily, what you're going to be doing with it or in an emergency situation, what you're going to do with this, it would be extremely hard to damage it. It's, um, it is 
perfectly designed for what it is designed to do. And uh, the coating's even handling a, a, a lot better than I thought it would as well. That's that new coating we sprayed. But it, um, it, it is a really, really nice. The good thing about this, what I like about this, is its versatility. Now, I carry a seven inch blade here. That's SEHF 37. It's one of my favorites. I've got smaller ones, more as all of that. Because of the size of this, I hear a lot of people and read a lot of comments saying, oh, it's too big, it's too heavy. I think of that as a bonus with this knife. Um, you're not trekking the Himalayas with it, obviously, if you're carrying about weight, but if just for bushing, uh, going out the bush, because of the size, you know, you can do things like hammer it in a bit and use it as Dave was showing you there, just pulling them along down in the bottom here, getting those little curls, making tent peg. You can, when you baton, because of the length of the blade, you know, you can get right across something uh, very, very big. And it's going to save you time in the long run, just rather than using a smaller knife, if, if that's what you're using for your fire prep. This one here and the grind on it just it splits straight through every time. So um, I actually see the size of this as a, as a positive, not a negative. Um, I, do, I do, do, do like it. I definitely will be getting one myself as well. Or I'll just take Dave's, I think.